Earlier this month, we had the Tory party conference and the Labour party conference. In my personal opinion, I see the current government, they're pushing extremely right-wing rhetoric and the Labour party pretty much are not really in opposition. So in your own words, where do you see the state of politics today? Well, I think the most obvious thing to say is we're recording this for night after two elections that make it very clear by elections that Labour are going to be the next government. I'm not a betting man, but I just saw as well that I think it's one of the betting companies has put the chances of a future Labour government at 90%. So we're not in like close, EA. people can stop worrying about getting the Tories out. The Tories are going. So the real question then is what is this future Labour government going to be, you know, look like? What is Prime Minister Keir Starmer, and that gives me partly shivers just to say it, going to be like? And I think we've seen he's going to be deeply authoritarian. He's going to appeal to the right. He's going to cozy up to big business, corporate lobbyists, fossil fuel companies. We've seen him wave through things like the Rosebank oil field. This is an oil field that has the equivalent carbon emissions of 28 of the lowest income countries. That's 700 million people around the world. And Keir Starmer doesn't think it's within his role or need to say, oh, no, actually, a Labour government wouldn't approve of that. We, we'd cancel it. And by the way, if he said that today, Rosebank would stop in its tracks because that would create enough investor uncertainty that it wouldn't be able to, to go on ahead. So where is the state of politics in this country right now? I think there's a very cosy neoliberal um, narrative where there's this idea that the household budget can be compared to the national economy and that's complete financial and economic incoherence and Labour often say there's no money left or we need to stick to our fiscal rules but the bit they miss from that sentence is they're making up these fiscal rules so it's completely within their powers to decide that actually we don't need to accept austerity narratives austerity has deeply divided this country it's created toxic rhetoric a lot of the time refugees um, the migrants, uh, black and brown communities, they're facing some of the worst effects of these toxic narratives. But Labour, rather than challenging those narratives or creating new narratives, just seems to be okay with doing Tory light a little bit, a little bit nicer than the Tories, but never really willing to um, challenge the status quo. And it's like they accept the country is fundamentally broken, but they don't accept that the solutions we need or the scale and urgency of these solutions are things worth doing. They're offering us this strange mix of cynicism and pessimism. I feel like we're getting a bit of a mixed picture with Labour. I mean, in one sense, you're getting Rachel Reeves going off to America and doing speeches about trickle-down economics and uh, the role of the state. Uh, Keir Starmer even said trickle-down economics, uh, economics is stupid. But at the same time, they're ruling out tax uh, rises for the wealthy, wealth tax. Uh, it feels like they're talking up austerity. Public ownership is out of the question. So... In a way, I suppose politics hasn't moved because George Osborne, David Cameron instituted austerity and Labour all picked up that mantle. So, I mean, do you think that Keir Starmer is essentially a new David Cameron? I think it's really clear that Keir Starmer is to the right of where David Cameron was in 2010. And for those who campaigned quite rightly against David Cameron saying, look at where this is going, look what it's going to do to our public services, to the NHS... Look how it's going to um, strip the police services and fire services to their knees. Look how it's going to strip back money for local councils. All of those things are now being supported and cheered on by Keir Starmer. And local councils, I think, is a real key one, actually, because that's somewhere which is vital for people. Yes, for things like bins and potholes, but also social services, local libraries, things that can really, that equalizes things that in an era of mass inequality, if you can get those things right, they give people the opportunity to be able to better their chances. Now, uh, local councils can't do this alone and we need wider systemic change. But if you strip local councils of even those basic services, there is no way social mobility will move. People remain trapped in those poverty traps. And the Labour Party talk about tackling the cost of living crisis. But there feels to be like no intention to scrap the poverty crisis or the inequality crisis. And actually, if you just tackle the cost of living crisis, sure, that's the immediate crisis and that's urgent. People will be able to, you know, put food in their belly and, and heat in the homes, that's important. But what about being a bit more aspirational than that and looking at a society where people don't have to worry about paying their rent or they can, you know, get a bus or a tube or a train depending on where, where they live in the world. Like, all of these things are possible and I'd even move towards conversations around universal basic income and universal basic services so people have access to all of these things. But the Labour Party just seem content to just talk about poverty and even that they're not talking about in particularly radical or even common sense yeah. terms.